Oh, what's happened, Daddy? Come on, man. <laughs> I just did that. Go for it. You press the button. Yeah, I'll do it. I, uh, you're a bit skew buff anyway. I, I know, absolutely. I'm a bit like that tonight, Gary. But <laughs> we, no. we've got some, I've got some yeah. accompanying music tonight, Gary. What, what? There's there's a, a car alarm in the street going off. Oh, I thought it was a wee Walls ice cream van. Remember them for the city? No, hear it, hear it. No. It's going no. off. It's there, no. Gary. It's there. No. Anyway, hey, welcome, welcome back, everyone, to Paisley Community Chat Show 41. Fluffing heck. 41, Gary. We, you know, we were having a wee chuckle about that the other day when we were talking. Uh -huh. 41, that's no a stone's throw away from 52. And 52 is going to be a year we've been doing this. A whole year, Gary. Aye, 52 is a year, unless you're an elite, I think. Aye. Andy, I'm sending you an email. It's very you're important. Me an email. Have I got to work my magic in the background here, Gary? Dead important. Aye, so aye, so 41 goes to 52. Uh, I can't believe we've been doing this for that long, Andy. And, but the light is at the end of the tunnel. One thing that's caught my eye right in it, the stream of the show here. Oh, my One goodness, thing, Gary. We're no, me we're no messing about. We're straight and it caught my eye. Well, can you believe that? I know. It's, just, it's almost professional. It's almost Jeez. like no one. Straight into the light at the end of the tunnel, Andy. I want to talk about light at the end of the tunnel, and folk will be wondering, what are you doing putting a picture of the lagoon on? Aye. Go on, Gary. Explain those, yourself. For those that are tuning in from around the world, welcome. This is a picture of Paisley's uh, premier swimming baths and <laughs> leisure centre. And very soon it's getting turned into a COVID vaccination centre. So I'm really pleased about that. The, the ramping up of the COVID vaccinations is the light at the end of the tunnel, Andy. Well, Gary, do you know what? You're absolutely in tune tonight because I was going to mention the exact same thing, that that was one of the things that caught my eye because we know ourselves that we've been locked down since this COVID um, situation has, has came on to us and the you know the vaccines have been developed and they're now starting to be deployed and this was what I was going to say caught my eye uh, courtesy of paisley.org.uk and, and here is some of the pictures of the inside of the lagoon I know you showed the, um, the, the outside picture there Gary but look at this these are our yeah. frontline staff vaccinating our uh, our more elderly uh, age groups, I guess, initially, those those uh, vulnerable groups. And isn't that just marvellous to see that we're now taking our action uh, to get uh, people vaccinated and, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, an end in sight to COVID and a return to normality, Gary? Yeah, and even better news, Andy, that, uh, that I read on the wires, is there such a thing? I read on oh. the wires today about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine being an uh, it means you can't catch it. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm no joking. That's but uh, I you don't transmit it, Gary. No, you can't catch it. You just can't catch it at all. You know, on the wires makes you bulletproof to COVID. I need right. to catch up. <laughs> you take the extra extra Oxford uh, AstraZeneca one, and you. You can't catch it. You can go. You can go to the fat and everything. It says on the label. <laughs> it says on the label. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, look, Gary, I know we'll be uh, a little bit later on the uh, down the line before we get our um, vaccination. But we do know some other folks who have been vaccinated, and some of them were vaccinated today. So, if you got your vaccination today, fantastic. Hope it all went well. Um, yeah, glad they, to, two, glad two of our guests. Up. Two of our guests got the vaccination. Oh. Wow, we'll need to ask yeah. them how it was, Gary. Uh, how it was. Yeah, yeah. If we right. see in the black and white room, MD Conk now, it's a it's a wee side effect has just kicked in. <laughs> 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 we see the Jim the net kill an hour. Can he can he have any of that? Listen, we've got some some of our uh, our usual viewers in uh, this evening. I'll just go through uh, some names. Evening, Fiona. Good to see you there. Um Chicago, as always. Uh where would you be without Elizabeth Van Dyke from That's Chicago. That's my kind of tune, Andy. <laughs> Absolutely. Paul's tuning in. Paul was one of our guests a few weeks ago. Um, evening, hey, Paul. Paul. Good to see hey, you. Norma in the house. Uh, Mr. Stewart uh, will be looking forward to his humour throughout the rest of the evening. 
Deep Freeze in Chicago, Janie's in, Council of Divine is in, uh, Helena. Now, how good was last week's oh, cook along with Helena? Andy, I had two helpings. I was really lucky that I, I left some till the following day. Went into the office, pinged the micro for two minutes and had that wee portion with the whiskey sauce. Uh, and then had the next spot. Oh, just delightful. Yeah. Elena, that was delightful. Thank that you. That was so really, much. really good. And uh, we definitely get spoiled. I could have just stopped the whole thing there and then just to have, uh, you know, just to enjoy the haggis, enjoy the twist that we had on it. And of course, it was also accompanied by some nice whiskey, which was uh, which was good. I only had a sniff of that. And that, honestly, that was my first whiskey in 30 years. If not more, uh, it was smashing. I took, an, took an allergic reaction to whiskey as a young man. Oh, did you? Why? Well, that's because you probably had a bottle of it. Um, evening, Donald. Good to see you. Um, teardrop gin in the house. Happy Wednesday, <gasps> Gary. I've got a compa I've got an confession an to make. Oh, what, what you done before we get on to the rest of the show? But before this, I was on a, a cocktail tasting session, mixing up my own cocktails. So, um, yeah, I've had a couple of wee sips of a cocktail earlier on. Have you? Have you really? Is that why you're gibbing? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but just in case, so folks, if I if I press the wrong buttons, slurring anyone, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. And just you, you. apologies in advance for Andy. If we this fifteen minute slot in advance of the guest, we usually talk. Quite a bit of mince. We usually talk, talk about the garbage, but it's going to be worse than night because Andy's on the cocktails. <laughs> they were really nice. I was proper cocktail shaking and, and everything. I, we had a cocktail tonight, Gary, and the egg white goes into it. Oh, oh. That's, it was... Andy, were you getting caught in the rain? <laughs> no. Oh, do you not like pina canadas? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, the way, I wonder where you were going with that one. You don't like pina coladas? Ah, yeah. No, I, I can't remember the rest of the lyrics, but I know what you're talking about, Gary. Uh, that was, that space, was tangential. <laughs> anyway, we'll not, we'll not go on. So what else caught your eye, Gary, this week? You've got oh, a few I, forgot, here. I forgot what's caught my eye. I, I don't want to put something up about Star Project, but I'm concerned about them. I've seen on social media they had a wee fire. But I believe it's okay. Is there anyone in from the Star Project? We're thinking about you. Hope everything's all right. What happened you know there, Gary? I missed that. I've been, I've been off the radar. They had a wee fire in their premises. I think they had a wee fire, and it was a wee electrical fire, and it kicked their phone line out. And I just seen on Twitter, I was doing doing my usual research, Andy, into tonight's show, and I seen on Twitter that their phone line's okay again. Uh, so hopefully things are getting back to normal for the Star Project. Hopefully everyone's okay. Uh, just if if there's anyone tuning in from the Star Project, we're thinking about you. Let us know you're all right. Fantastic. What else, Gary? Because I know you sent through a few pictures, and I was thinking which ones are which. But uh, I think we're. Well, uh, my eye, Andy, we we like our uh, art on the show. And absolutely. Caught my eye today was this. The Paisley Art Institute have just kicked off their Scottish drawing competition for 2021. So if right. there's any sketchers or drawers out there, then uh, look up the Paisley Art Institute on the uh, on their website or their social media. There's a competition going, and I think it's to exhibit at this year's uh, art exhibition for the Paisley Art Institute. So that caught my eye. I thought, I thought that was quite good. That was oh, it's good. good. We're, we're big fans of uh, the Paisley Art Institute for sure. And open entry, Gary, 2nd of February through to the 31st of March with the exhibition running from the 4th to the 26th of June. So I'll try and get the details up here uh, later on. The uh, exhibition that opened to take place in the Piazza, but last year due to COVID, they did this uh, a virtual reality uh, one, which was pretty impressive. And yeah. entry details uh, at paisleyartinstitute.org or at Art Paisley on social media. So uh, please... Just inter interrupt, Andy. There's another video on its way to you. Oh, do I need to check Thank my you. email? Uh, if we get this right, two emails in. We're, we're winging it tonight, guys. Make, making the show up as we go along, Gary. 
<laughs> and now that since you mentioned the piazza there, I mean that's quite an interesting Freudian slide into a conversation, Andy, about the Paisley Art Institute being in the piazza and then, it, and then one of the big open spaces in there, the old co-op. I, I remember going into that. I went into that cracking big space. A great exhibition. It was really good. It was fantastic. And, and of course, Annette's coming on later on, Andy, to talk about question of the week and, and the response and the conversation related to the the, the piazza. Absolutely. Question. Absolutely. So you'll all remember if you were watching last week, folks, um, great to see so many uh, viewers on this evening. Uh, but at Paisley Community Trust, we like to take a temperature check of Paisley Community and Renfrewshire Community. Ask you about things um, pertinent to your uh, town, to your um, location, to your communities, what you'd like to see happen. We only ask the questions. That's we all ask the questions that people are asking about, and Absolutely. Andy. Absolutely. I remember, I remember one one day I was standing in the Swan. Right. And then uh, this guy came out of me and went, are, are you the guy that's knocking the piazza down? Well, what, what's, what's it going to be me? <laughs> But, but that was last week's question because it's one that, that comes up on social media quite a lot. Let's bulldoze the piazza. Yeah. Um, now, that's dead easy. And we said on last week's show, that's dead easy to say. It's a really, really complex issue. You've got to look at, first of all, you've got to look at the physical structure of it. You've got to look at the, the owners of the building. You've got to think about the tenants that are in there and how you relocate them. You've got to think about the environmental impact. You've got to think about the economic impact. But in principle, and that's what we're trying to do, is just what is the sentiment of people in Paisley and Renfrewshire? Would you like to see this happen or would you rather see that happen? And in the case of the piazza, it was very simple. The question was, would you, uh, or sorry, should the Paisley Piazza Shopping Centre be demolished to open up development of the Riverside? Yes or no? So we'll be yeah. announcing the results to that particular question later on in the show, Gary. Yeah, and we'll put it in a wee bit more context as well, Andy, because it's a it's a topical question that's lasted for years, and we're still talking about it, and we want to be respectful. and I, And I've got to say, the 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 chat that was coming in on social media was really respectful and, and not heated. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. I, I think it's okay to ask questions and people to ask us questions. It's of not us saying we're going to do this or somebody else is going to do it. Or, in fact, I've got to kind of lance the boil. It's nothing to do with the council. We're asking questions that people ask, and it's a community thing. We're, just saying, we're only absolutely. asking for opinions. We're not and, saying we're going to knock the damn thing down. All right? <laughs> and here's my, my kind of view on this, right? We're going to ask a question of a week for the next calendar year. It's 52 questions if you figure it out, and it's 52 answers. It's 52 data points that you're now more informed on. So if it's, you know, things that we might ask in the future about the high street, should we open up the high street and get rid of the pedestrianisation, we'll at least have a sense check of what people's sentiment is. So collecting the information is great. What happens with it? Well, we have to decide. Is there an opportunity to progress on it? Is there an opportunity to research it more? So we're just asking the questions. And all a lot of the comments and folk have been absolutely brilliant. We really encourage the debate, the conversation. You can put a comment on um, SurveyMonkey that we use. You can just click yes or no or more or less or whatever the answer is going to be. So it's a you know black and white choice, unfortunately. That's what Facebook is there for. So when you see us posting up the question, that bit underneath, have your conversation, have your debate, because what we'd like to do is find out what the real views are. If you want to come on the show and talk about it, so if anyone's feeling particularly strong, come on the show. And most importantly, if you have a burning question you'd like to ask the community yourself, let us know and we'll ask that question for you. Super, do Andy, something else caught my eye. Go on, Gary. You know how Paisley Community Trust exists to put community at heart of regeneration of our town? Love it. Love it. Yeah, Who came up with that, Gary? Elevator pitch there, Andy. Uh, but today, today, this was published. So there was a, a consultation facilitated and ran by Scotland's Towns Partnership who consulted far and wide, and, and we contributed to this. And, it, and they've come out with a, a, a blueprint. 
uh, for, for town centres and that town centres should be at the heart of our communities and and I, I would actually mirror that and say that communities should be at the heart of our town centres. So it's a, they've got, there's two documents there, Andy. One is an easy read, so it's a kind of bullet point picture thing. Right. And the other, one, the other one is the formal report. Really interesting stuff. Uh, it's about putting town centre first, stopping out-of-town developments, looking at changing the rate system, all of the things that we've been talking about for a long time. So it's a really interesting document. I, I did a quick skim on it today, but I think if we're lucky, Andy, there, there might be a, a, a wee synopsis summary video that you've got. Fantastic. From the, from the Cabinet yes. Secretary. Have you got that ready, Andy? I, I do. Ready to go, Gary. So here we are with our first video this evening. Got that one. I extend my wholehearted thanks to Professor Lee Sparks, and all the members of the review group for the knowledge, expertise and commitment that they have brought to this important programme of work. And they've done this in the midst of the extraordinary circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic, taking into account the profound economic impact we know the pandemic is having and will continue to have on our people, our businesses, our communities and town centres. Flourishing and vibrant town centres are essential for the social, economic and environmental well-being of our communities. Local people know their towns best and we need to trust and empower our communities and local business to help enable their neighbourhoods to thrive. Many of us have rediscovered our towns in a new way recently and we want to harness this. This independent review will play a crucial role in the regeneration of our towns and our town centres. The report develops a new vision for the future of our town centres, capturing some of the newfound sense of localism and provides recommendations to help achieve the healthier, fairer, greener, successful towns our communities deserve. Hey, there you go, Andy. So that was, that was Cabinet Secretary talking about that Future Towns published report, which is quite interesting. So it's got, I think it's going to form policy and hopefully it does. And, uh, and and hopefully Paisley Community Trust and our communities will be at the centre of the redevelopment of town centres. Yeah, and, and there's that really important word again, localism. And localism. Without, without spoiling the question of the week, stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned, folks. Right, Andy, then, and caught your eye before we move into our guest slot. No, I think the main thing for me we've already talked about is just the vaccinations kicking off in Paisley. I think that's fantastic, Gary, we're... You know, okay. we're, we're turning the corner, but I think without further ado, we've got a cracking batch of guests on this evening. So uh, over to you, Gary, to do the introductions. All right. Well, I, I think this is this is a supporting St. Martin and St. Martin supporting the community and the community supporting St. Martin, that type of show we've got tonight. And uh, a well kept face round about Love Street. I mean, I mean St. Martin Park these days, uh, pre-COVID and Fingers crossed post-COVID is Jim Crawford. So, hi, Jim. Welcome to the show. Good evening, everyone. Hope all is well. Evening, Jim. Great to see you on, sir. Are you, are you keeping well yourself? Absolutely wonderful, yeah. I've had the vaccination. Was that today? No, I had it in, um, last Monday. Good stuff. Good stuff. Any any side effects or anything no, like that? All good. No. Still a sick month, man. I'm afraid so. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> As an anti-St. Martin jag. <laughs> <laughs> I've, not had it. I've not had it yet. I'm staring away from it. But it's brilliant to see you, Jim. See, for those, that, for those that don't know you, tell us who you are and what you do in and around the club for us, please. Well, I'm part of the volunteer squad that we've got at Simon Football Club. Um, and basically what we've been doing is We've been helping um, the groundsmen in particular um, to tidy up the stadium after a match when he doesn't have the resources to actually yeah. clean the stadium before there's maybe a midweek game again. So yeah. we've been volunteering to go down and give him a hand. Yeah, You've been doing that for ages, Jim. Take us right back to, to when it all well, started for you. Basically the history of volunteering at Simon Park. Um, as you know, Gary, the business community have always supported someone very well um, throughout the years. And in the 80s, there was a business club set up. Um, and those gentlemen called themselves FOSMA, Friends yeah. of St. Martin's Association. 
Um, and at that particular time, they were all businessmen. They wanted to help someone in whatever way they could. But when it came to the 1990s, 95 era, um, Southern Football Club was in dire straits financially. So they tried to uh, introduce new investment into the club. And the way of doing that was to go around uh, and ask people to come in and have a look at the stadium and that. But there was a realisation that the stadium was so run down, particularly the main stand area. And yeah. as you approach the stadium, we had big metal gates at Love Street, if you remember, at yeah. both ends of the stadium. They needed painting. The outside, the exterior of the main stand needed painting. There was so much needed done so that if an invest, investor was coming in, he could see at least the club was trying to go through the motions of, you know, being as uh, approachable as they possibly could. Yeah. Is that when it all started for you, Jim? Way back when was that? Yeah, uh, way back in the night, around about 95, 96 time. And, and how many how many volunteers at that point, Jim, jumped to the cause? Time, you're probably talking about five or six volunteers. Yep. Um, and on a good day, maybe got to be eight, ten. Uh, it just all depends what we were doing at that particular Aye. time. Aye. Jim, is Aye. that is that over and above the 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 every now and again shout to clear the park because the park had been full of snow and all that stuff? That's over yeah. and above, isn't it? That's yeah. completely separate. Yeah, this was kind of separate. Like, um, there was uh, the guy that used to run PMC security, who yeah. used to do the security yeah. at the stadium, Peter Copeland. Um, he'd had the initiative to get a group of volunteers together, and it was him that actually started um, getting materials for us to do the painting and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and that went on for a, a good uh, year or so until yeah. the Reds really thing came in. And then the, the last board of directors, that's when they took the club over. And that made us kind of redundant, like, because there was a, a different kind of game plan from them yeah. uh, to do things would go in the future. Did you did you witness all the shenanigans with Reds Brealey? Yes, yes. Well, fortunately enough, the, some of the people, like Sir Peter Copeland and that, we did do a due diligence on Reds Brealey. Yeah. And before we went to the AGM, um, we had a, a dossier of um, facts and figures concerning Reg Brealey and the takeover, which yeah. was very helpful um, to determine that he wasn't going to get control of the club. And that's when Stuart Gilmer, George Campbell, Brian McCausland, Alan Marshall and Peter Coleman and I got together and decided that they would take over the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was an interesting time, and that guy really just kind of he, he, he nearly took the, the club over, and it was a sense that he was going to ruin it, wasn't it? He was going to asset strip. Basically, yeah. what he would do would he would um, encourage players to come from down south because that's where his breeding was. He, 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 I think he was involved at Darlington Football Club at one time, yeah, and maybe for Lyle as well. And what he did was he was going to bring players from down south up here on loan deals, and then sell them on after that. But he was also going to asset our, uh, asset strip our young young players and that and move them on to other clubs. And he was also going to redevelop the stadium, but there was never plans in, put in place for that about how yeah. he was going to finance that living. But I, as far as I know, there was never any money that he was there because his own brother, um, he disowned him um, yeah. because he, he was involved, involved in Noidart up north a big estate, um, yeah. and he actually, he just disowned his brother, um, saying that Reg Brewer was just a charlatan. Yeah, and you can see, obviously, I mean, you know, I don't know too much about the all the, the different teams and the way that they've been managed or owned over the years, but uh, another, uh, one of the Glasgow clubs, let's just say, have had some rather interesting folk coming in to, to buy them or own them, and, you know, that's ended up in bad places and court and various other things, so you know, it's really important, whoever's at the the front heading up the um, the, cl the clubs get really good, uh, you know, intentions for it, and they're not planning to, as you say, go in and asset strip. You need to build a great team and a big, great club, and that the supporters are such a, an important part of that journey, Jim. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the whole um, idea of um, Smicer taking over the club because th then cements in place. The fact is that nobody can just walk in as a sugar daddy, take over the club, and in 10 years' time, get fed up with it, walk away, leaving massive debts, 
and so much acrimony that it just wouldn't be viable to keep it going. Yeah, Jim, so are you involved? Sorry, Gary. Jim, sorry, Jim, were you involved in the transition from Fosma out Stuart, through the Stuart Gilmore era and into well, Smart? Yeah, well, if we can fast forward to maybe about 2016-17, um, when the new when um, Gordon Scott came on board and he took over the chairmanship of the club, um, Tommy Doherty, the groundsman, was struggling to cope with some of the tasks he was given. So we would help him in that respect. But there was also a realisation um, when the Smicer committee was involved and in tried to raise funds and that for to buy the buds, they also wanted to help the club in some respect. Yeah. And because it's our club as such, yeah. um, we thought we'd contact the club and see what we could do. Well, Tom the groundsman needed a, a good bit of help because he was basically there himself. And we yeah. also had Ralston on board, which was another site which he would have to try and work between the two. Um, but we knew that the club spent a fair amount of their budget pre-season and trying to clean up the stadium, getting it prepared for the introduction of the supporters at the start of a new season. Yeah. That was costing the club a bit of money. So that was coming, that money had to come from somewhere. And it was basically coming from the players' funds, you know, to yeah. buy players, etc. Yeah. Um, so we realised that if we could take that on board to do that job over the close season, it would mean that the club could filter that money back into the playing budget. And, and yeah, when you say we, you mean volunteers like yourself, Jim? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. What happened was I was on the SMISA committee at the particular time, yeah. um, and I was taking off, made the task of going and getting recruits. So I got I compiled a list of recruits um, and contacted them all, and we just had a get together, and then we went down to the stadium and then started working. We more or less started with 10 volunteers. And it sometimes went on to maybe 12, 14 at any given time. Yeah. Um, successfully did that in the first season um, in the summer months. Um, just go through the whole stadium, clean the backs and fronts of the seats, make sure that the walkways and all that were clean and tidy, um, as you can see. Um, and it was just a case of we just what it is our stadium. We frequent it, we can't conduct or have any influence on what happens in the park. But we can certainly make the match day experience better by yeah. making them more comfortable. Yeah. Hey, Jim, that's you, that's you and part of the squad there. Yes. Uh, how many seats had you done by then in that picture? <laughs> <laughs> that was three quarters of the main stand, by the way. My God. Wow. Did, you, did you get sponsored for that? No chance, no. No, you could have. I mean, if there's a social media, you could have done a sponsor a seat clean and you'd have made a, made a bit of money. See, to be honest, if the club <laughs> would have taken that initiative up, yeah, it would have been a good idea, Gary, but thanks for that. Probably three years too late. <laughs> ah, come on, mind sight. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Gary. Come on. You've got to come up with these ideas at the time, Gary. <laughs> Here's an idea for you, Jim. How do you not get sponsored for cleaning the seats? Oh, it's a good idea, Gareth. Oh, well, we listen, hang on, hold on a second. Listen, there's there's Laura already opting to, to buy a seat clean. <laughs> well done, Laura. I don't, I don't know how much Laura's planning to offer for a seat clean, but we can maybe yeah. uh, ask her uh, later Laura's on. But they're uh, off and running, Jim. Some of the best ideas are old ideas. <laughs> off, off, and off, and running, and and I think you know, Jim. In terms of the volunteers that you've you've got, so you know, these are people like yourself. They've they've maybe been lifelong St. Mun fans or they've been, you know, new to, to Paisley and adopted the, the team. We heard of uh, Tom Urie only taking up supporting St. Mun just the, just the other week there and they seem to have got, had a, a good run of good luck in terms of some of their, their games. But, you know, for, for you, you're, you're doing it for the club, you're doing it for the team, you're doing it because St. Mun's got a, you cut you through the middle and it's St. Mun in there, isn't it, Jim? Yes, but basically, as I said, it, there has to be a different mindset with supporters nowadays. I mean, football clubs are part of the community. And if you take that in a broader context, there's a, that's our football club. So we have to be responsible for that. We can't expect a board of directors to be there and to try and do everything because it just financially, it's just not obligatory anymore. Yeah. It doesn't happen the way it did years ago. Um, so we then need to step up to the plate as well. Yeah. And we are not a bunch of elitists because we do this just for the love 
of what we do. The, the club we're doing cleaning the inside of the stadium. We've done the outside perimeter fence. We've done Ralston. We help at Ralston as well. Um, and any tasks that we're asked to do, we're quite willing to fulfil, and we do it, you know, gracefully because we just it's part of you know us. Yeah. Yeah, and then kind of help it, it helps take the financial burden, I guess, off of the, the team itself. Absolutely, the club itself. Yeah. when we do eventually take over the club, yeah. then that money has to come from somewhere, and that money could be used to a better purpose if we're doing some of the work. Yeah, it's, it's not all glamour, Jim, though, is it? I mean, look at that. Absolutely no, That was a horrendous occasion. What happened that there, Jim? Storm, that was storm damage, but... Um, there was so much water because they had to um, deflate the dome because it was lying there. There was so much water gathered on the top of it. It then became congealed and really Oof. dirty. So we had to get and clean the water off and then try and sc scrub the dome before it was inflated again. God, say it's a family show, John. We need to talk about something else. Uh, and inflating and scrubbing. <laughs> you're in the is that a barber thing going on? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> three, three, three bald guys on the screen right now, Gary. I don't know. I don't get, know. Your, get your dome done. Get your, get your dome done. Well, that's maybe another name for the, the show. And, and, and Jim, I'm sure you've seen many lowlights and highlights over your years of following St. Mern and working with St. Mern and doing the sort of volunteering. But what are the kind of some of the highlights that you've personally been involved in, uh, Jim? Would you say that you you look back in and, and you had a, a hand in it or a role in it that you're really you're really proud of, Jim? Well, I actually worked for someone football club. Um, I was a lottery manager at one time. I oh, did right, that for five years. I uh -huh. also helped with um, corporate hospitality, which was absolutely fantastic. I really loved that. Um, but the highlight for me was when Jack Ross's team won the championship. I actually had the role of taking the medals onto the podium. Oh to get them oh. presented to the players. Oh, that's brilliant. Was, that was absolutely brilliant. And I actually got a medal off of one of the sponsors. Oh, did you? Oh, that's fantastic. Aye, that was absolutely brilliant. So that's oh. some of the highlights. The lows, <sighs> too many lows. <laughs> <Goodness. Right. laughs> that, is, that is the thing about support, supporting Jim, and I, and I know it well, is that there's a lot of lows, but when you get a high, it's the highest. Oh, you, okay. you endorse it, you embrace it with so much, you know, Vever, it's just you really need to get um, a mind into how good it is and how good you feel at that time because yeah, really yeah. it's going to be yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. How much are you missing it, Jim? Um, I've actually struggled to watch um, any television games. Yeah, uh, I know as a season to go, older, we get it free and that, but I, I, I invariably put it on, watch it for five or ten minutes there. Then get distracted, do something else, and keep it there. And it's there, but I know it's enjoyable. And it's the same way watching live games and television, other games. I just I used to love the Premiership highlights at night. I really struggle to watch Premiership uh, highlights on a Saturday night now. It's just it's just become it's very alienated. You know, yeah. it's just something I'm not enjoying. Yeah. I think it highlights Jim that football is more than just watching a game. That it's oh, absolutely. Oh, there's no doubt about that. There's a you know, definitely a mental thing with it. It gives you, you know, you build yourself up in a sad, as you know, Gary. It just you build yeah. yourself up to go to the game. You know, you've got a procedure, a routine that you go through, um, and it gives you a, a real buzz. Um, yeah, and you, it's you build it up through the week. It's with your pals, it's your family, folk that you bump yeah. into, folk yeah. that are running around you in the stadium that you know and you've got to know. All of that is what it's about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. It's so important. And, you know, ultimately, given the fact that you are volunteering, and I know we're in difficult times right now, you know, things will hopefully start to return to to normal. But for, for those folk that are, you know, Paisley, Renfrewshire, you know, St Murn fans, volunteers, are the, are the doors always open, Jim? Can folk get involved always, if, they're, always if they're interested? If you do it through the SLO, they would contact me, or you can do it through Smicer. Um, and we're always looking for volunteers. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. In yeah. fact, we're all champing at the bit to get back in to the oh, stadium. Yeah. We've still got a bit of the fence we need to finish. 
started cleaning most of it. I think there's two big panels still to be done, and we're really desperate to get in and do it. Um, so we're really, but one of the initiatives I need to highlight as well, one of the initiatives that we've asked the club to look into is the introduction of recyclable bins at every uh, vomitory at the stadium. Yep. So they go forward, it makes it necessary for anybody to take their rubbish, put it in these bins before yep. they go home. It means it's less work for to be done at the stadium and it helps keep it clean long term. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what, what, what a job you're doing. Fingers crossed, Jim, we can get back into the stadium. I don't see it this season, but hopefully, well, absolutely not. Absolutely hopefully not. we'll get next year. Hopefully we'll get next year. And there's a sense that I've got, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of talk around about football circles about investing in your club and, the, and paying for your season ticket. And if this COVID thing went into next year, I've got a real sense that St. Mun fans will invest next year no matter what. Absolutely, Gary. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, there has to be a realisation that, you know, we've kind of budgeted, with, like, we're okay for this year, this season. We've probably budgeted for next season being more or less the same. Yeah. But at the same time, that would be a Brucey bonus if the club can get the supporters back on board the same as they were this season. Yeah. 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 I mean, what's, uh, what does this um, stadium take in terms of capacity? It's just under eight thousand. Just under eight thousand, yeah. and are, are not all of those seats, I guess, are open for um, season tickets because you'll have your travelling support, uh, allotment, yeah. and then you'll have your turnstile allotment. But how many did they tend to put on for um, for season ticket sales, and what percentage of them get sold every year? Well, I think you're talking about roughly three thousand over three thousand. Right. See if they sold eight thousand season tickets, they would sell them because that's the way it goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the, you get the bigger clubs uh, and, and other places nearby that will just sell the stadium out and it's and it's season tickets. You go down to Newcastle, Man United, you can't get in because it's season. Can't get in because it's season tickets. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, ultimately, average attendance. What 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 tends to you know the average yeah, attendance? Four and a half, five thousand. Yeah, four and a half, five thousand on a good day. You get up to six, seven. It's, I don't, yeah. I don't think the stadium. I think once it's been full, Jim, I can't remember what game it was. We've played it recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the Thank opening you. game was uh, a sellout. Come on, no, up, was no, no, there was too many hangers on. <laughs> <laughs> Name names, come on, guy. Can you defend too, Gary? Come on, spell the beans. Well, there was, there was. I, I was. I've seen some pictures the day and the former first minister was in a picture. I think it'll be redacted. And I'd see your first, your first voluntary job when you go back in, Jim. <laughs> Take up that <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's been great to you, Jim. That's, that's, that's been an absolute testament pleasure. Testament to yourself and your and your, everyone that volunteers at St. Mun, but for you leading that off, Jim, it's well done. Uh, we couldn't do without you and the like of you. So thank you so much. And thanks for coming on the show tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's so nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Jim. Hang about thank in the back. Take care. See you later on, Jim. Yeah. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> We've got to decide who puts guests in and out, don't we? <laughs> Jim's, I mean, you can see the, the number of brilliant comments coming through, you know, for folk that's, that, you know, here's a, I don't know who Martin is, but don't know what I'd do without Jim. You know, that must be just lovely to, to to read that if you're Jim. If you're in volunteering, doing what you do, you know, you're passionate about your club, passionate about the team, you're passionate about giving everybody a great experience when they go to watch the football and you get your crew round about you and they hold you in such high regard, Gary, that's so important. That's that community Absolutely. spirit. Absolutely, and it's not just about football. The football's the, the 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 bit in the middle, in this whole community that's gathered around the club. Yeah, that is what it's about. And Josh, bear with us, please. We know we're running over, but we'll get we'll get to you in a minute. And what Josh has achieved over the the most recent years at at the club and animating the ground and the new stadium, that that's what it's about. It's, it's about that community that surrounds the club, and you get to know people, and they become your pals. Looking forward to getting Josh on. So, what's what's on the show next, Gary? Are we at the question of the week time? I know, right, tin helmet. <laughs> let's let's get our question of the week guru on Annette. 
I thought you were going to be home play some music there. I've not worked out what the theme tune is yet. Oh dear. Oh. Annette, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Have you had a, a good day today, Annette? Yes, good day today. I had my vaccine today, which is uh, good. Got fine. Got my merchandise in it. Fantastic. Oh, well done again. Well done again. The vaccine. Oh, oh, very good. We're in the marketing slot at the moment. Would be about merch. <laughs> we still don't have a shop, folks. You can't buy anything. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We soon will have a shop. Oh, will we? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Watch this space oh. for the. Basically, community trust merchandise. Yeah, definitely. Got some, some creative ideas and things, and some um, fantastic creative people. Paisley um, sending me images and things that we can use for our merchandise. So, yeah, watch this space. Watch this space. So, Annette, you've been looking after question of the week for us since we, we kicked it off. And it's fair to say it's gone down really, really well. Lots of brilliant engagement, lots of great conversation. Tell us a wee bit more about it, Annette. No, definitely. We've got absolutely um, amazing conversations going on, some positive, some negative, some um, not so heated discussions, but very polite discussions happening on So, um, in our Facebook pages, Twitter and stuff. So 41 different discussions that happened um, just on our page for um, the Piazza question. So just to remind you, the question was, should the Paisley Piazza shopping centre be demolished to open up um, for development of the river side. So we had 652 people respond. Wow. And, yeah, fantastic. Really good. And, and the drum roll, drum roll for the answers. Yeah, yeah. And we had 535 say yes, it should. So that was 82%. And then 117 say no, it shouldn't. So lots of discussion, as I said, a um, couple of things that came through quite clearly was that they wanted to see lots of more uh, local um, people buying from local businesses. So we wanted to see um, possibly if it was kept it to be a little bit different in its approach to be more sociable, small shops and um, restaurants, indoor markets instead of just like all the different shops, so having it a little bit more of a, a community kind of um, centre rather than just lots of shops and, and, and things like that. Um, if it was taken away, they wanted to see the development of the, the, the riverside, they wanted to see it going right through, um, they wanted to see a tunnel going through, they were very conscious that there's a lot of work to be done. Oh yeah, yeah. thank you that question, and there was, there was feedback here and there, and it's, and it's quite right that the feedback now and again mentioned that what what a complex uh, undertaking that may be and i think the the principle of the question of the week is to let people fall one side of the fence or the other yep. with, without bringing up the complexity and we know it's complex we know that it's very unlikely that it will happen but there is this psyche in the town and any time i speak to people and the, the conversation gets round to that it's, I mean, just to, to be really open about it, that's what people ask about and talk about. And, it, and it's probably a strategic vision of, wouldn't it be great if we could see a river again in a, in a bit of a dream? And then if, if it was steeped in reality, people would probably err towards, look, it's, it's, not going to get, it's not going to get knocked down. Somebody owns that and there's shops in it. And, uh -huh. to, be respectful, and to be respectful of that, and we are, of course, but all we are doing uh, with the question is letting people say what they think, have an opinion, and it's reflective of the community. Yeah. That's and and, yeah. and um, Roddy's put up a good good comment, and you know, Roddy, I'm, I'm guessing by your comment, you're you're in the no category, and, and and that's absolutely fine, and this is a really respectful thing. Everybody's entitled to to their opinion, but he brings up lots of really good points in there about the cost about the retail, about compensation, about student accommodation, about offices and all these things. And 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 basically those being hurdles too high to get over so it will never happen. However, here's a wee thought, folks. You can see an overwhelming yes support for we'd like to get rid of it. Is there the possibility that we could actually just even start the process? So let's look under the covers and let's test some of those arguments just a little bit. So who do you bring on to do this? Well, you bring on architects, you bring on engineers, 
you bring on quantity surveyors, you build on people that have got environmental impact um, capability to be able to study what happens there. You bring on the economic impact, you look at the displacement within the town, what effects it could have. If you were to carry out a report or a study, that might take one year, it might take three years to generate, but at least you would bottom out these things, but you bottom them out on the premise that there's actually an interest in doing it. And that's what this type of thing does. We're not here to say we want this done or we want that done. We ask the question, if there's interest, we can explore it and see where it goes from there. So although, Roddy, you brought up some really, really good points and they're all totally valid, what it does is allow us a question to say, right, OK, let's dig into that a little bit. And can those things actually be proven to be so impactful that they wouldn't happen? Or do the pros outweigh the cons of getting rid of such a place like the, the piazza? Yeah, and I think it, it is an interesting conversation. And it's... It's not the start of the conversation, Andy. This conversation has been going on probably since the place got built. Uh, I don't remember it getting built. I was too young, but I do remember it being open. I remember it not being very nice. It's actually not a bad shopping centre. I think Aye. the principle is it's on top of our river, and, uh, and that, that's what people nostalgically maybe want to go back and see. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And there's a, a picture that was posted up earlier on. You, know, you can see, obviously, through the river opened up yeah, the environment is so important. This was obviously before the construction works. And then you can see from that lower picture just how much of the river it takes uh, over. But that was very much last week's question of the week. Um, yeah. are, we, are we going to do this week's question of the week? Yeah, yeah but I was just one. it leads on to this because I wanted to flag something myself. What kind of came through was um, concern from the, from the Paisley Centre and that if that shuts down, then where does some of the shops in there go? So either it's onto the high street or do they then go to um, the piazza? So I think for me, although this is not a direct question that's going to happen now, it might, uh, the piazza might have to be developed a little bit more uh, for the next couple of years. Yep. Um, you know, so bringing these other small shops onto the high street and the piazza and making it more this social place, bringing it into more of a community. Um, and yep. the NHS 24, I didn't know that they, they were there. So yep. that's fantastic for Paisley. No, I don't either. And, uh, and I, I think one thing, it, it, I think it's clear to, we need to be clear with what we're saying here. Uh, no one is saying that this is short term going to happen. No one is saying that there's a plan to do this. No one is saying that this is a council initiative. It's not. It's, we're, we're just reflecting back, back out on social media what we get asked about. Yeah. So we're not. We're not being. Hopefully, not being disrespectful by asking people what they think because oh, that's all. that's all we're doing. I'm just asking you what you think. And yeah. this conversation, I think, has been polite. Exactly, because conversation conversation is so healthy. Uh, and, and you know, you do raise a point there in terms of um, the traders that are in there, the businesses that are in there. But what we're seeing, you know, particularly through this COVID time, let's take a look at um, ASOS and Boohoo picking up the um, Arcadia um, businesses, so Dorothy Perkins, Burton's, Topman, Topshop, et cetera, et cetera. They're buying the brands. They're buying all the stock not interested in the premises at all, not interested in the property. That is changing. People's consuming uh, consumer habits in terms of how they buy products is changing. And, you know, Paisley towns need to evolve, and that goes back to uh, the, the one that we showed earlier on, Gary, in terms of Scotland's towns partnerships and looking at yeah. the fairer, healthier communities. You know, the communities are in charge of the towns. We will shape the future, not for us, but as a legacy to generations to come. So it's great that everyone's involved in the debate. Great stuff. And it, so that, yeah. kind of, that kind of leads to the, the next question um, around, uh, you know, locally. So the next question, do you have that? Ready to go, Annette. So the next question would be, after COVID lockdown, will you be more likely to shop locally in Paisley? Yes or no? Or would you still then go out to further afield? Yeah. So what we'd like to know is, from the community, would they now stay local, help our businesses, help us in uh, local um, shops, etc. Yeah, and th this was something that, you know, when we had um, Provost Lorraine Cameron on in our very first show, um, Lorraine was saying very much about, you know, post-COVID, 
taken that real local approach was something that, that she endorsed and she supported. And it's kind of been a theme um, throughout. But ultimately, as we say, people's behaviours have changed. And, and it's a great question to, to ask, uh, Annette. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try and work a little bit of magic. Are you ready for this? <laughs> If you're, not, if you're not watching, if you're not watching on your smart device, but you have a spare camera phone, what I want you to do is switch it to your camera and then hold it up to the screen now. Right, Gary, you got your phone there? Right. Aye, aye. Uh -huh. right. So everyone, everyone that's listening, everyone that's watching, get your phones out if you're not watching the show on the phone. Stick it to your camera. Hold it up to the screen. And you get a wee link to come up to say you can open the survey monkey. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a guy from Nigeria want to give me seventy million dollars. <laughs> I don't know what websites you've been going on, Gary, but hopefully, did did you get it? Well, I put it. I'll do it again for you, Gary. Right, go. Ah, that was only joking. Is that the survey monkey thing that came up? That's really clever, Andy. That's good, isn't it? Look, you just like that, you just hold your your foot camera up to the screen, survey monkey. Answer the question, yes or no. And Annette, I'm guessing you're, you've got, have you got some results coming in already? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. The, the, the engagement uh, from the community is amazing. Yeah, yeah. what I'm saying, Annette, that chimes really with that report that came out today is all about localism. It mentions 20 minute journey and 20 minute community. The principle of towns or the future towns is that you live within 20 minutes of anything that you want to try and have in your life. So your medical centre, you'd be able to walk down to the town and get to a medical centre. You should be able to walk down the town and get to the pictures. Aye. That's Paul Stewart. I know. What website is Paul Stewart on? Although I think I think we forget a wee spelling, spelling mistake. Apparently we're talking about Loch Doon on... on. <laughs> I need to check the banner on that one. Let's just see. Let's just see. What have we got? Lockdown, lockdown. Oh, it's changed. I don't know how you've got. <laughs> oh, we've used an old image. It's been corrected, folks. If you go onto oh, the sorry. website, but well, well spotted. We've got some. Is this nostalgia.com? Hey, Gary, it's no nine o'clock yet. For goodness' sake. <laughs> <laughs> and then, listen, as always, thank you so much for coming on, and you know, uh, thank you for um, doing all the engagement work that you do in social media, and for um, getting that debate going. So, folks, please use the Survey Monkey link; it will be posted up there. Go on, let us know what you think. Yes or no? Are you more likely to shop local? And if you want to debate about that, yeah. jump onto the question bit. Give us your opinion. Give us your views. And if you've got a question that you want to ask. Drop um, Paisley Community Trust a wee message and we'll get your question on and we'll take care of that, Annette, won't we? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay, Annette, See you later, Annette. Take care. Bye. You're on the button, Andy. I was on the button quick, just in case you jumped on the button, Gary. So. Oh, no, I, want you, I, want, I stayed off the button so you could go on the button. All ah, right, okay. Well, listen, if you're going to bring our next guest and you can get you can uh, remove the next guest at the end of that well we agree that that's a, that's a, that's a protocol we'll write you that down in, you get rid of them we'll write that down into our process for our iso 9000 procedure not that we want to get rid of any of our guests gary because uh, well, no, it's, it's a delight to speak to all of them i'm going to ask you something andy did that last wee email i sent you is that all ready and set up well, you sent me a video across, Gary. I've, I've, I've no looked at it, but I've uploaded it. So hopefully, okay. it's... well, hopefully it's the right one. Josh, <laughs> are you sending us the right videos here. I hope so. But we're, we could be banned permanently from Facebook if uh, we put the wrong video out. But uh, no, let me just look. It looks like it's it's a football related one, Gary. Right. Good. Well, what what we've got tonight? Obviously, it's a St. Mirren supporting St Mirren and the community supporting St Mirren and St Mirren supporting the community and the, we've had Jim on and he spoke very well about volunteering at the club and I suppose Josh is also a volunteer uh, of sorts and does a number of different things in and around the club and uh, for me him and his posse or whatever they're called is it W7 nod your head in the back if I'm right Josh <laughs> no what is it M7 
Have I got the numbers right? You're expecting him to do sign language now, uh, Gary. Bring him on and he'll tell us. The North Bank, the new North Bank, although it's in the West. So Josh and his crew at the North Bank. In fact, I was driving up to the airport area today and uh, I looked over to the right to where the old Love Street used to be and it just struck me the the names and the, the, the name nearest the airport. Uh, the street's called North Bank. So it's quite something. So before we bring you in, Josh, we're going to we're going to play a wee a wee video just to uh, just to tee Josh up. So Andy, if you've got that video that Josh sent us, the latest video that Josh sent us, yeah, and fingers 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 Fantastic. Brilliant, Josh. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Josh, I was getting worried because I haven't seen that video uh, before, and you probably heard the story a few months ago when we had Hugh and Cry on, and not very naively we played the Looking for Linda uh, video along with the soundtrack, and we get put in Facebook jail. But I've got a wee... When I heard the music there, I thought, are we going to get into trouble? But I shazammed it, and it came up with, I don't know if you can see that, no result. What that music or the thing in the back? It's actually the first time I've seen the full thing as well myself. It was uh, one of my friends that runs this at my active Twitter page that, that kindly made it. I was putting it in the group chat earlier saying, anybody get any wee videos or, or pictures that we can use on this? And yeah, yeah. I've been busy all day and he's made that up for us. So well done, Stephen, for that. Cheers, yeah. buddy. Uh, Josh, that's a that's a fantastic video of the just that it's just a flavour of of the atmosphere that's been created around the club. But tell us your background with the, with the club and supporting St Man and how you kicked all of this stuff off. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, it was back in kind of, we've been trying to get something going on for, for quite a while, but back in 2016, um, there was quite a few years going to away games, uh, meeting up in the same locations at different away games, uh, creating an atmosphere at away games, and then we are starting to think, why can't we have this atmosphere at a home ground? Because we've been in the, in the stadium since 2009, and there was no atmosphere. You know yourself, Gary. You go there, yeah. and you're sitting. You're sitting in the freezing cold. People sitting like this. It was just. It felt dead. Um, yeah. But away games, it was. It was night and day. Um, so when we were creating this atmosphere, we were asking ourselves, why can't we have this? So we kept on trying, kept on pushing. There was maybe fans saying, "Oh, it's not going to work." People have tried it before. Um, the club even maybe being a bit hesitant. Who are these people? What you want to do? Um, things like that. Obviously. A lot of people don't understand kind of ultra ultra culture and um, what it's about. People automatically associate it with hooliganism and things like that. I think we bunch of young guys are, are here to cause bother when or not. It's just a bit a bit too daft for the love of a club, maybe. Um so that that's where it all started. Um and then 2017, um, just right right in January we decided, right, we'll go for it. Um we started getting caught, we came up with North Bank Agro to go for the, the old song, and then yeah. we just shortened it to North Bank. So that's what that's what we're stuck with now. Yeah, I remember. I remember it starting, Josh, and it started really quite small, didn't it? Over in that corner. Yeah. How many, how many of the, uh, or where were you then? Did 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 you count and then count <laughs> the growth? Have you done something we, like that? We we actually counted a lot. So we used to. I remember the first time that we kind of got the. The W7 section, we'd, we'd been in a we'd been in a few different areas of the ground and try to grow, but we, we kept on getting moved when Celtic and Rangers fans came or smaller yeah. wee supports. So it was really hard to grow because there, there wasn't anywhere somebody could buy a season ticket. Um, so when we, we got the area W7 for three games trial, um, it was Tony Fitzpatrick and stuff that arranged that for us. So we got we got over there and we're worried because we're isolated. We, 
from the normal fans because nobody nobody sat in that area. Um, but looking back in hindsight, it actually gave us the space to grow because maybe the first few times it was between 50 to 100 people. There's now 300 people in that section yeah. kind of every game that we, we were getting to. So at the start, we were putting flags down on the front of the seats, uh, try to push everybody at the back to try and make it look as crowded as possible. But there's just not any, any room for flags anymore. It's just... Um, any banners we need to try and put them up elsewhere because there's just no room. Oh, Standing fantastic. room only. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, seen it, I've seen it grow, Josh, from from nothing because I I sit in the main stand diagonally from where where your crowd is, and it and it grew from a, a bunch of people just making a it was like an echo because it it was in the big space. Yeah. To a, just a cavernous noise and an atmosphere from. A ground that, and you're right, it was dead. It was a box with no noise, no atmosphere. Now and again, you would get it going. Uh, and then this rumble started in the corner that became uh, unstoppable. Uh, and it's great. It's great to see. Yep, no, I totally agree. Yeah, and, and, and you're one of the founders, I guess. You're one of the kind of individuals that have been getting everybody together. And, you know, that, that, that must be, you know, Pretty tough at times getting folk to come along and because what you do, I mean, it's a spectacle, it's entertainment, and uh, it's not just going along and watching a, a game of football, is it? No, it's uh, there's a lot that goes on uh, behind the scenes. There's a lot of a lot of people that uh, need to have stuff stored in their cupboards, uh, all the materials, all the flags, uh, drums, etc. Then there's uh, the partners putting up with bringing people into the house. Obviously, before lockdown, flags getting painted in your living room, tables <laughs> upside down, things like that. Uh, staying up to midnight, uh, just designing a flag before you start painting it till three in the morning uh, yeah. before a game. So there's a there's a lot of people uh, in the background uh, that really it's it's became a life to, to to be honest with you. Similar to to Jim that he had on earlier, it's cut us down the middle and it would be St Mirren in there. It's it's just all about it's just all about what we do really. Yeah, yeah and, and, and talking about what you do, and I mean it's not just. Uh, making banners and flags, and it's about what you stand for. And tell us a bit more about what that those morals and those that that fibre that you've got in you, and about what, what what it's meant to be all about. Yeah. Um, so as you're saying earlier, Sibirian fans in general, you go to the game, it's like a big family. And um, so we don't discriminate against anybody, whatever age or whatever. Come along if you want to come, jump about with us. That's fine. And um, we've got people. We as a group we. There's kind of no politics at all, um, non non political group. Um, but in between the group, there's people back on, our old friends at the end of the day about different politics. But we group stances, um, unlike some other ultras groups, we don't take anything to do with, with the politics sides. We're, we're for St Mirren, for Paisley, uh, in the local area, um, and just love supporting it. Oh, fantastic! And you know you've got your fan club in tonight, uh, Josh, <laughs> for, for for sure. Um, so captain, captain of the ship, and you know there's so many. I think that's the one thing that you can see about you know the St. Mon supporters. They're so passionate about the town. Even the um, the activity that you had the other week and the uh, I Dream stuff that you were uh, doing with the um, the semi final there, and it's just you know basically passion, support, St. Mon Paisley Town through and through, isn't it? No, definitely. And the one question that always and and I've if you've watched this show before, you know that I'm I'm not a football guy, unfortunately. Um, I, I do support St. Mun because that was how I was brought up. Support your home team, so I, I do support St. Mun, but I go very very rarely to the, the the games. And when I do go, and I was I've, I have been to the new stadium, I have been within the last sort of season that we were able to go. I was there a couple of times to watch St. Mun. Who makes all the songs up? Oh, it's yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> the it's, songs, it's, um, the Abika, the, tequila. There's still all the classics, but uh, most of the songs get made on the back of a wee, uh, a wee bus, going up to some far away ground when we've had too many shandies, and there'll be <laughs> some music playing, and then somebody goes, right, I've got it. And then <laughs> other, other times, somebody will send in a voice recording after they've jumped out of shower. After I've been to their work, they go, right, I've got a song for us, and then everybody's like, rubbish, and then it'll end up getting sang at the ground a few months later. 
<laughs> no, so I, I remember the original North Bank, and I was at, I was in the North Bank back in Love Street when I was a boy, and it was the greatest buzz that you could ever get. That if you start a song and everybody joins in, it's amazing. And yeah. I remember, I remember one night. You don't know this song, Josh. It was Alan Logan, Your Magic, Your Magic. <laughs> And the whole grand started singing it. And it was me. And your pals turned around to you and go, you started that. I know, it's probably what, what a feeling. It's great, isn't it? And it's just that buzz you get. And uh, I, I'm interested in how you get the spark of ideas for the displays, Josh. How, uh, tell me about any of your favourites. Give me give me one in particular and tell me about how that sparks and how you end up doing it. Um. So... They come from a, a kind of a variation of places. Um, a lot of the time, it will be based on a, a kind of bigger game, and we'll think of right. We've got a date, so it usually starts with a date. And then we'll go right. What what would you like to do? Is there any significance? Uh, any any dates coming up? Um, kind of anniversary of the club, things like that. Uh, one that comes to mind uh, that we've done it was for the Dundee United game. Um, just before Christmas time, uh, I think it was 2018. Uh, you've probably seen it from the snowball fight videos. Um, oh, I, yeah, yeah. The, the day that we had to all well, went down and shoveled all the snow off the pitch. Um, but that was a it was a, a, a beautiful big banner that we done. It was under the moon of love. Yeah. Uh, I actually sent over a, a picture of it. It was based on the, the starry starry night with the the Paisley skyline instead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Van Gogh. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Try, try to think back on them. Usually it's a lot of it's a lot of small input. Different people say do this, do that, and then it all kind of always comes together in the end. Um, individuals putting in their own little bit of effort. Yeah, I've, Josh, I'm going to if I can get this right. If I know how to do this, go maybe on, I Gary. Don't, maybe I don't. Yeah, maybe I don't. Know how to module two weeks ago, Gary. I got my I got my certificate through the other day, Andy. So thanks for that. So what I'm going to show you is is a, a moment that. I didn't take part in it, but I witnessed the whole lot of it because uh, I was standing. Uh, it was the day that we, we went to pick up the trophy to win the league. And the, the march happened, and the, I was in the Burger and Keg. And I just stood at the edge of Burger and Keg and watched this whole happen, whole thing happen before my eyes. So I'm going to show a, a short snippet of that video, then we're going to talk about it, Josh, if yeah. that's okay. And hopefully this works. Brilliant. Yep. Oh, Gary, has Gary <laughs> frozen? Nice technology, yeah. Oh, Gary's Gary's needs to put another 50p in the, 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 the Wi-Fi meter. Um, Josh, that was fantastic. I mean, we can clearly see your your leadership skills there coming through. You've got a whole crew behind you. You're conducting them. You've got them all together. Tell what was that about and tell us a wee bit about what you were what you were doing then. Yeah, no, no problem at all. So that was um, back the the Jack Ross period when we'd won the the championship. Um, I can't actually remember the exact game that we done it for. I think it might have been the, the last home game of the season. Right. And we we decided to go about it the, the official way. Um, other groups in the past have done things where they've done a, unofficial marches, but we decided to contact the council and the police and say, look, we're looking to do this uh, for, yeah. for the community. I remember writing down on the form, um, 100 people, and I scored it out, and then I wrote 200 down, and then I wrote a wee in brackets, just to be safe. And then I remember speaking to the, the police commander uh, after that, saying, Josh, uh, 
we estimate there was at least uh, one and a half thousand people there. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so wow. they'd, um, they'd organised to, to obviously shut off all the roads for us um, in the route, um, which was good for them. There were a bit of, bit of safety concerns and things like that, but yeah. um, we managed to get around it at the end, which was obviously a delight because what, what a day it was. And um, even people to this day just say they, they, they loved it. What we've done was, was absolutely fantastic. And it's a, a highlight and um, some St Mirren fans um, will say what a day and things like that. Yeah, no, absolutely, and um, so many comments. I guess there's so many of your uh, your loyal fan base uh, for Sitman uh, are in, you know, showing you the support. Although there was an interesting claim here, um, Josh. I, I, I'm not sure. You, I didn't realise you had your own your your own merchandise line, Josh. Yeah, um, that's actually uh, quite a big a big part. Uh, obviously, that's a joke, but the merchandise side of things, that's um, obviously we're on that representing a t-shirt here but that's um that's part of the way that we, we fund a lot of the, the displays and all that kind of thing so that's that's what we do really to make a lot of merchandise to yeah. fund all that yeah no that's it's it's so um so important that you you do get your brand out there and you get everyone behind that that cause and uh, same question i guess what i asked you jim you know i mean it's among uh, the trials and tribulations, the highs and the lows, but what have been some of the, the, I mean, obviously we just saw that march there, that must have been pretty special for you, Josh, but what are some of the, the, the real moments, the real highlights that you look back on and go, just, that was just the best? Um, oh, this is so hard. There's been so many in recent years. Um, I really, the, the, the day we all ended up on the pitch, even though it was a nil nil draw, I believe, but that day that we were all on the pitch and celebrating all the players, players were getting flung about people's shoulders and doing backflips and all that. That was that was such a, a great day. Um, taking two and a half thousand fans up to Dundee and just having a, a laugh with your mates and your family. Yeah. Um, things like that. And recent years have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And we know we know St Mun has got a big rivalry with, with Morton. Um, but what fans do you really like coming to St Mon Park? Who, who, who are your favourites? Who do you like to kind of? I was going to say get stuck into, but there's no fighting at the football now. That that's uh, yesteryear. But you know, which fans do you set of fans do you bounce off of the most? Um, I don't know. It's a, a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the teams that it wouldn't be teams that you think of. Um, like uh, when, for example. I like it when smaller clubs come to, to St Mirren. We were yeah. in the Championship, for example, and, and Breakin fans were coming and they're standing <laughs> and they're making so much noise. Their team's playing rubbish. They're jumping about crazy, banging on the back of the shutters. Just going, going mad. It's I'd rather that than have 3,000 old fun fans there um, making noise or even Aberdeen, Dundee United. They, they all bring a good support, but I don't think it, any of them are as good as the, the smaller clubs that that have came and and made just as much noise. Aye, and, and would you agree with this one? Anyone but Motherwell? <laughs> I was. We were actually talking about this the other day. Um, everybody thinks there's this kind of rivalry between different clubs, but when we have every game, I'm like, I actually hate them. Like that team. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, anybody but Motherwell, but anybody but anybody. <laughs> anyone but any, a, anyone. Gary, you're, you're back. You've returned. Am I? Is it? Am I here? Can you hear we me? Can, you can. We can see you. 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 you look a bit flushed. Um, um, I had to go and get the uh, put the milk bottles out. <laughs> Was that the problem? And of course, what you what, what's happened here is you've left the complete non football guy talking to um, you know the head of St Mun's North Bank that knows everything about the team, and, and I'm I'm just having to wing it as best I can, Gary. So I'm glad I'm glad you're back. But Josh, I hope my chat's not been too. No, you've been great. <laughs> Has it been all right, Josh, in my absence? Ah, he's been brilliant. Andy, Andy was a lucky charm for one game. I know. I was. I was. And it was uh, Simon uh, and Aberdeen. It was one of the first of the, that particular season, and uh, Simon beat Aberdeen that day, one 0 uh, first game of the season last year. Josh Andy yep. was up in the post seats and uh, and we won and he thought he was a lucky charm, but not as lucky as Tom Urey. I mean, Tom Urey's been a, a recent convert 
They're not a convert, yep. but he's, he's declared his colours and we've hardly been beat. Yep, Gar no, definitely. Gar Gary, I, ha I hate to say this, Gary, but so many uh, Josh fans are in tonight and so many brilliant comments on Facebook. It's great to see everyone coming in. And, and so much so, Gary, that nobody actually missed you when you disappeared. No comments about Gary's disappearance. They, ne they never noticed, Gary. Aye, that's what you're saying. I'm going to watch it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Excellent, Josh. So, you so know... What, Andy, Andy, so what I missed the halfway through the, the, the march into the stadium. I missed that. Uh, you get you get kicked you get kicked off uh, at that right. one. I think you're coming back in, Gary, on your regular computer. Oh, no, hey, look at this! I'm multi coming. Oh, Echo. Gary, you've taken us into another dimension. What the heck? Oh, we dodgy here. And this is this is this could be. <laughs> oh, good day, Gary. <laughs> Josh, here's a song to you. <laughs> Get him muted, Andy. Right. Oh, he's right. off. He's that off. one, Andy. Take me out that one. All right, take the G man out. Kick him from the studio. There he is. We were talking about the highs and the lows of St. Martin. What was good? What wasn't so good? And we also talked about what support Josh likes to see coming to St. Martin Park. Oh, we can't hear you now, Gary. Gary, come on. What's going on, man? What's going on here? Josh, you're obviously fans on the able to support St. Mun right now because of COVID. Gary, say something. No, you're, you're away. You were better on your phone. He's gone back on his phone. Obviously, fans are, are... What else are you doing right now to keep the momentum, keep the enthusiasm and keep the club going? Because St. Mun's on a good run right now. They're, they're up to sixth in the, in the league right now. So you must still be doing something, Josh. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, as Jim was saying earlier on, it's it's really hard to watch the games when you're, there's nobody there and you can hear the wind whistling by the commentators and it's, it, it's really hard. Um, but the games have been good. Oh. Uh, people have been playing well. Um, also, <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so the, the team have been playing well. Um, with us, it's been, it's been a bit of a challenge. Um, our kind of bigger, uh, bigger displays and things like that, we'd usually uh, paint them or trace them in a, a community centre or a, a scout hall or something like that. Um, so we've not been able to do that. So any of the banners that we've done uh, so far have been done in uh, people's garages, people's halls. Top um, of the dining room table, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And a lot of it, it's been a lot different. So... For example, the, the last banner uh, that we just done with um, Robert Tannehill and things like that, we we had to all do it individually, uh, obviously because of the coronavirus stuff. Aye. So we had uh, one person, myself, I was tracing out all the banners against the, the wall, no much bigger than, than that. And you can see from the angles of my house, there's nothing, nothing straight at all. So I was trying to trace the letters with my projector um, and then one of the guys were, were cutting them out and then another few of the guys were taping them down onto the, the white um, poly fabric stuff. Um, so it's been a bit of a, a logistical challenge um, yep. this time. And the, the banners that we just done there, I've not counted, but I know that there was, in the first kind of lot, there was over 120 letters to be done. So yeah. it must be yeah. the biggest display that we've done, um, kind of length and uh, lengthwise. And, well, uh, Josh, I've, I've got to say that, that uh, uh, last week's uh, video and display around the town is actually uh, an inspiration for tonight's show because when when we played that, in fact, when, when I was walking around the town that weekend, I, I seen the I seen the banner on the Hamels Bridge, and and it, when it's not in context, you think, what's that? And a lot of people came onto the show and commented last week and and said to us, I seen one of them. I didn't have a clue what it was. Until the video came up, yeah, and I, I, and it's there's there's so many so much praise last week for that piece of work. I mean that's that that was art. That's that was totally and utterly inspired. Yep, and and it's not that doesn't even touch on the relation to football. 
that that goes right right to your soul and and the community and and i spoke about it last week about if we had won the bid for city of culture in 2021 that's what it would have been all about because it was it was that good josh yep no definitely yeah i've seen loads of loads of comments on all the socials and all over the place with random people that i don't know and they're saying not not a football fan didn't know what it's about there was people saying it brought me tears um loads of loads of different things that uh was obviously great great to see because um i think there's only kind of six or seven days all in because of the coronavirus stuff that i actually put, put into this one and it was a lot of it was a lot of hours a lot of effort uh, people took days off work and um, things like that to get it all done I had four hours sleeping, 48 hours. Um, the video actually got made at, I think, about six or seven o'clock in the morning after being up for nearly 20 hours, Yeah. yeah. Um, putting the flags up. So it was, I was actually surprised myself at how good it came out. Oh, it was it was absolutely brilliant. And, and I think actually the time that you shot it was one of the big things that made it so special because we're in a lockdown right now the town's a lot quieter you know just seeing paisley and some of the magnificent i mean you got all the buildings all those key landmarks you had a wonderful message in there from Tannehill, you know paisley's own poet and 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 you know i've got it up in front of me you know I, I, they would have been written in 1700 and something um but it stands it, it stands the test of, the test of time and then of course it was about the journey that St Mun's on. It was just fantastic, and I, and I know there was lots of folk welling up. There's there's Craig. Craig, he was uh, he was welling up uh, by the looks of things. Uh, Sean, lots of tears uh, from Sean as well. But it was just um, it was just incredible. It really was. Yeah, and and Tom's on tonight as well. Tom, you did your uh, you're really brilliant to get Tom to do that for you, and I know that. The work that Tom's doing in the lockdown is inspirational as well. But that just added another another layer, another level of of brilliance. Yeah. I don't want to overstate that, for sure. or, or, uh, but, but it was that good. No, definitely. We were, we were sitting right in our brains. So we'd come up with the, the concept. And then, obviously, there was a kind of... We had to get people out scouting locations and taking pictures, measuring up people's fences. Um, how 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 big uh, how big do we need to make this? So yeah. people are doing all this kind of stuff, and then we're thinking, right, how do we bring it all together? There was yeah. there was so many different um, ideas. We had uh, people out with drones taking the shots. We had different things, and then we ended up just going with the kind of plain image, uh, zooming in in some parts uh, for the video, and it, it worked really well. And the to Tom Yuri. Uh, doing it for us, I can't can't thank him enough. It, it brought it all together. We're sitting on the internet, googling uh, on YouTube, seeing if there was anybody for Paisley that reads out poems. Uh, on uh, kind of Upwork and Fiverr, seeing if we could have anybody uh, pay pay a Scottish person if they could read out a poem. And then uh, somebody went, "Would be that guy after River City?" <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then somebody else went. Is he not a Simmering fan now? Like, uh, somebody just wrote a brilliant. And then I gave him a message uh, on Facebook and he got back to me, I think, within half an hour or something. Brilliant. Like, not a problem. Do it for you, no bother. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're going to finish this slot of the show, Josh, uh, for you with that because we are, we are that touched by it and inspired by it that we want to show it again and again and again. We might not show it again and again, but we'll definitely show it now. Uh, I can't thank you enough, Josh, for what you and your crew do at the at the club and the stadium and animating that place that was a soulless box. Uh, keep it going, guys. Uh, and and thanks uh, for tonight. And thanks for coming on the show and sharing your stories with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you, jo Josh. Thanks so much. And, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks for having us, guys. Cheers, Josh. Hang about in the back. Hold it. Right, Gary, you all fussed or are you taking Josh out? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to do it in case I... <laughs> right, I'm taking you, Josh. Thanks for tonight. Right there, Josh. Cheers, pal. I'll play the video, Gary. Thanks, <laughs> Andy. Absolutely seamless, Gary. Seamless. <laughs> Thank you. 
I dream, do you? It's the natural thing to do. Dreams have not limits. There's wrongs and rights. You can live a lifetime in the short hours of the nights. Dreams of love, hate and fear. Some are vague and some are clear. We dream of reaching for the stars. We dream the future from where we are. Good dreams do come true, and they're custom made for me and you. Just wonderful, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> There's Craig, Craig Tweedy away again. <laughs> We've set him off. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a peak for Josh and the guys. I hope, and I and I have seen the different things that they've done, and I, I'm always surprised with what they come up with next. Uh, but that's a uh, that's that's different level stuff. That oh, uh, it absolutely uh, it is different level stuff. It's such a um, it's a movement for Paisley. It really it really is. It's a it's a movement for Paisley and a movement for someone that's. Brilliant to get behind the consideration that they put into that, you know, the searching for the stars and there was the observatory in the background, you know, really, really clever. Well, well done. So fantastic. And we've got the uh, the provost is uh, she's she's uh, reaching for the hankies now as, as well. So uh, beautiful, brilliant, fantastic. Listen, it's been a great um, show this evening, Gary. I know we've had a few wee technical problems. We lost you midway th through the programme, Gary. But uh, we had, uh, I think though, I tell you what, Gary, Josh as a as a, a backup presenter, um, a couple of folks were suggesting it on the on the, the Facebook feed there, Gary. Oh, right, well, okay. Well, let's uh, question of the week. <laughs> a new question of the week. Talking of which, <laughs> talking of which, um. Thank you to everyone that's been asking, uh, answering rather the question of the week tonight. And just as a quick recap, and apologies for the little spelling mistake, I'm reliably told it's been updated. But question of the week for week number three is, after COVID lockdown, will you be more likely to shop locally in Paisley? So are you more likely to shop locally in Paisley? Yes or no? So that's what we're interested to find out. And uh, I've got any, some. I've got, I've got early, some news. Any early sense of that, Andy? We, we 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 do, and I, and I'm happy to to reveal. Um, seventy three percent are saying yes. Twenty seven twenty seven percent saying no. So seventy three percent are saying they're more likely to shop locally. Yeah. So that's us off to a good start for this evening, folks. We'll roll that question of the week over the next week. You can get it on our Facebook pages. Make sure you uh, answer and uh, have your say on the Facebook feed if you get any thoughts or ideas. That's brilliant, Andy. And so what I want to say, Andy, we don't want to overrun the overrun period that we, <laughs> we usually have and then turn this into a two-hour special. So I want to try and get to the end of the show. But it just leaves me to say that every time we get guests on, Andy, the guests are absolutely amazing. They're fantastic. And it's all brilliant. about that. And to, tonight has been extra special for me. It's been a brilliant show. Yeah, it's been it's been really good. And I know you, Gary, you are a diehard St. Mon fan. You've got your season ticket. You go and watch the buddies whenever they're playing at home. You'll go to the away games when you can. So, you know, for someone that supports St. Mon, being able to speak to really inspirational individuals like Jim and Josh, who are really... You know, there, there you get, Jim, the volunteer work that they do at the stadium with the club. It's just brilliant. And then you've got Josh that's brought his energy and his leadership, along with all of his other compadres, to really create energy at St. Mun Park. It's just, we're, we're, we're so thankful. No politics, no nonsense, just St. Mun, just Paisley. Isn't that a wonderful thing to have, Gary? Yeah, and we're lucky to have them. It's a, it's a real... It's a, it's a brilliant community down at St. Mon. The people are fantastic. Uh, and Jim and Josh are just a, a credit to themselves in the football club. Brilliant. So, Gary, we, we, well, we don't want to go into extra, extra time, as uh, Jackie has mentioned. We're at that kind of 
you know, an hour and a half uh, cut off. And um, I guess we need to start thinking about what's on next week, Gary. Got it sorted, I think, Andy. A couple of wee things to fall into place. But next week is going to be all about the Paisley Book Festival. So it's a, it's a topical. We'll be talking about reading, talking about books. I think you should have a book of the week slot, Andy, and I think I should have a week of the, book of the week slot. What are we reading? And if we're no reading, we better go and get something to read. <laughs> Make it stick up as we go along. <laughs> because it's all about books next week. So hopefully that will be a, another good. I have no doubt, Andy. That's going to be another cracking show. It's going to be another brilliant show. So, folks, listen. If you've joined us for this evening, we've noticed that uh, you know a, a, a new batch of names coming in in the social media comments. As always, the guests make the show, the audience make the show. So, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening on your Wednesday nights. We'll let you get on with the rest of your evening, and uh, hopefully, all being well, we'll see you again next week. See you all next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now. Bye bye.